Andy Beats here from Pop Turn. It's to Max Burke, holderable Ted on Peacock coming soon. Happy New Year, sir. Welcome to the show. Happy New Year. Happy to be here. It's really interesting because I feel like anytime there's like a prequel or like kind of an extension of a big movie, there's like familiar territory and unfamiliar territory because we know the movie with, you know, Seth MacFarlane voicing Ted and Mark Wahlberg. But now this is kind of going yeah. back. You know, you're playing a young version of this character. Do you think about those things that like you know stuff, but at the same time, you don't know much? You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I definitely thought about it going into this for sure like you know you've got a just a wealth of data to pull from as an actor two whole movies of mark Wahlberg as this character but like you said it is all new stuff it is the the show itself is about new stuff it's about firsts it's about first time watching porn first time smoking <laughs> weed like first first halloween without your best friend you know it's it's about new stuff, and, and that's sort of the tack I tried to take going into it. I feel like with a comedy, maybe this kind of applies a little bit more than other genres that you've worked in. But are you conscious of the audience member watching Ted while you're making it? Like, when you kind of look at jokes or talk about jokes of everyone, like, oh, this is going to lie well or anything? Or does that kind of happen after you rap? That sort of happens after the fact. Like, in the moment, I'm just sort of focused on the situation. I'm focused on the timing. I'm focused on the banter. I certainly am wanting to make it funny for, you know, the end of the line consumer, the person who's who's watching it, the fan. But in the moment, I'm not really thinking about them. I'm thinking about, oh, what's the joke here? Is there anything else I can be doing? How do we find what makes this particular joke or scene so funny? Reading the scripts for this and then going and filming the thing in a lot of yeah. ways are two separate journeys, but in a lot of ways they could be kind of seen as one big journey of kind of from a storytelling acting perspective for you. Is it one kind of big journey or is it two kind of separate journeys reading it, getting ready and then going and filming Ted? Yeah, it's, it is all just sort of part of the same thing. Like reading the scripts beforehand really gives you an opportunity to like, especially for a comedy, get the lines out, but like feel how they are in your mouth. Like, feel the timing of it, feel the pacing, which is so, so, so important for comedy. And then getting it into your bones well enough, not such that it's like over rehearsed or you found the right way to do it, but so you've got enough of a baseline. So in the moment you can just play around and yeah. do whatever you want. You can make, you can make decisions based on the baseline that you've given yourself. Does your mindset acting wise change depending on the genre or is it all storytelling for Max Burkholder? It's all pretty much storytelling. I was I was talking with somebody earlier who was like, is, is your approach different uh, for comedy and drama? And really no, because one of the most important things about comedy is that it's not funny to the people that it's happening to. It's not funny if you're in the scene. It's disturbing or threatening or awful or scary. Uh, it's the, the more you can get into the seriousness of the moment for your character, mm -hmm. the more the absurdity of the situation gets to, you know, play out. Absolutely. Shifting gears a little bit, you, you know where this is going. I'm a big horror movie fan. I am speaking to horror movie royalty here. I really am. Because <laughs> I you, know about royalty. I'm saying, well, you open up the door. You know what I mean? You, you yeah. open, you, the floodgates are open because of your character and it starts a whole... I was joking about the, with my friend about this. It starts a whole franchise. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I open up the door. I still get hate all the time on on in my Instagram DMs and fucking oh sorry. No, you in can swear. <laughs> oh, great, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of these interviews, I can't you know speak as as freely as I would in in daily conversation. But it's been it's been it's th that journey was probably fucking wild, basically, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hundred percent. Still get people calling me a shithead in in my DMs, which I honestly like. Keep it coming, y'all. Those actually make my absolute day when I go into my requests, and it's just like. But I insult. feel okay. It's interesting. We're going way back here, right? Because that movie yeah. came out. What year was that? That was like a while ago. Like I mean, first we filmed that when I was fourteen, so yeah. like twelve years ago. Yeah. Okay. So like we're going, yeah. we're going back, but. I mean, I think there was a little bit of that in the script where, like, he meant well, but he was an idiot kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so it's like people mad at you. It's like that 
you did a good job as from an acting perspective, right? Do you think about it? Yeah, that? exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I take it with a badge of honor. Every time somebody says they hate me because of that movie, I'm like, yes. All right, I'm good. Were you able to kind of keep up to, like, did you keep up to date with all the Purge movies afterwards, knowing you were part of the kind of the start of the franchise? No, I didn't keep up to date with them very much. I watched, um, God, which one was the second one? Yeah, I forget the names at this point. I just know it's like yeah. two. even the ones that have specialty names. I just call them four or five. Yeah, six. no, it was it was the one between the purge and the purge election year. Yes, uh, whichever one that was. Uh, so I watched that one, and then weirdly enough, uh, my my older brother James Burkholder, uh, he's a, a film composer. He does film scores, and he helped out on uh, the first purge. So this purge, um, not the one, one, not the first of the purge no, movies. No, the first the purge movie. movie. Yeah. Called the first purge. That's yeah. a little a little Easter egg there, Burkholder connection yeah. with those. Is it cool to be able to say that you've worked on a horror movie at a time, you know, the last 15, 20 years where the, the genre is really kind of elevated, right? Like it's pretty crazy. Oh, yeah, it's it's absolutely booming. Well, I mean, I know people love that movie, and it was it was <laughs> super fun to shoot a hundred percent. I um, know. <laughs> everybody in that movie was so good. I know it's 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 so crazy. Getting back to Ted. Are there a lot of conversations sure. with your cast and the creators and directors about like the game plan, so to speak, like in terms of like what you guys are going to do, the dinner table conversations and everything? Like, are there a lot of conversations before filming or is it kind of not as much as you think? So it's it's interesting you bring up the dinner table conversations in yeah. particular because we set out, I think it was like three days, like like four or five hours a day before we started properly filming to rehearse specifically those big family scenes yeah. where we really wanted to get those in, in our bones because we shot them all the way through. Like these are like nine, 10 minute scenes that we would do nine, 10 minute takes of. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to make sure that we had the dynamics down. We had the timing down. Everybody sort of knew where there would be room to like jump in with an extra joke or an alternate line reading uh, when they wanted to. Uh, and that was also like really important for establishing the family dynamic between yeah. five of us, which was yeah. so, so, so important. You've been acting for a while, you know what I mean? And, you know, you started at a young age, you know, um, daddy daycare and everything. And I know that like when you're younger, I mean, that's like a long time ago. So I feel like there's no kind of like yeah. lessons or everything, but like going more towards the later, like the purge and the parenthood days and everything where you actually like may remember more, you know what I mean? Like, um, were there kind of things project to project that you were able to kind of take to Ted and other projects, like from learning experiences, from just kind of the craft? Like, I'm just curious about that. Or are they all kind of separate projects? I mean, everything's everything's similar, but everything's unique. You know yeah. what I mean? Every single role has its own challenges and has its own joys, which is part of what makes this profession so fun and attractive to people because it's it's a it's a brand new pleasure every single time you go into work. Yeah. Um I will say, you know, lessons you learn acting on like as a series regular while still going to high school yes is how to how to save your energy, how to <laughs> not be going at full blast 100%. Because they're both the going at full blast. You have classes, exams and you have yeah. you know, cable television. You've got exams, schedule. you've got <laughs> your full-time job, you know, you've got all of it. So Really, and I really tried to take this to heart going into shooting Ted because yep. it was sort of the most demanding shooting schedule I've I've really ever had. Yep. Um, really finding the moments where you can rest and take it easy and identifying the moments where it's like, no, it's worth it to be dead brain exhausted after this mm -hmm. and really get my all in this particular case. Absolutely. Was Diet Daycare your first movie ever? Yep. 23 years ago. See, I used to play in bands. And yeah, about that, 20 years ago, I was playing in rock bands and everything. I have videos and everything. I mean, I can't go back and watch them. Is it the same to say, with, like, can you, like, is it hard for you to watch Daddy Daycare? <laughs> it's, it's like Daddy Daycare and like the stuff I did from when I was like, you know, three yeah. to like, like 12 or 13. I'm like, I can watch that. That's fine. <laughs> like, that's divorced enough from like my current sense of self <laughs> yeah, yeah. that it doesn't give me any kind of like icky, like, ugh. Yeah. But anything after that, up to and including uh, Ted, like, I think it's hilarious. I really love it. I'm proud of the work. Yeah. Still so hard for me to watch myself. Yeah. Really just 
not not good. Not well, I good. think it depends on actors. There are some actors that like don't watch their stuff, and I kind of learned that the hard way. Like when I started doing interviews with Pop Alternative, where I would like be like, "What was it like kind of seeing your 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 stuff back?" And like some one actor straight up was just like, "I haven't watched it, so I can't really like answer that question." And then I just kind of like there was like a frozen moment for a second. You know what I mean? Where it was like, "Oh, okay, well yeah. that bit was." Okay. I was I was able to watch uh, enough of Ted. And I, I also was able to watch it because of how good everybody else yeah. is in it. Mm -hmm. Like that was enough of a draw for me to be like, okay, I'll just like sort of close one eye when I'm on screen and just focus on the other people. Because mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's funny and Your it's well written. Your on-screen parents have been on my show too. Show to Alana and Scott. So they they have been on the, the show. So the yeah. Girls, they're so great. So they're so funny with each other in the show. They are. They're... <laughs> I don't know how they shot any of the scenes that they shot. I've I've seen a, a few more of the clips of just like scenes between the two of them, like their like their dinner scene, going out to dinner. Mm -hmm. Like I don't know how they did that, and like made the day. Like I I don't know how both of them weren't just cracking. I mean they're they're true pros, so you got to give it to them. But yeah. I it seems impossible. Premiering January eleventh on Peacock, I believe on is Ted. So they could check yes, that out. Right. Yes. And um to recap, you know, funny dinner table conversations where it kind of all started. You're a very good actor because of the hate you get on Purge. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Max, so great chatting with you, man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. All right. Thanks so much for having me, man. No problem. Instagram is the best kind of way for people to keep up date with everything, right? Yeah. Instagram. I don't really use Twitter slash X, whatever the fuck it's yeah, called. Yeah, Ma Ma uh, Ma Max Burkholder yeah. on Instagram. Instagram so. at Max underscore Burkholder. Awesome. You got it. Well, it's been Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. You can catch Max Burkholder and Ted premiering on Peacock January 11th. Until next time, this is Max and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. This has been an Autograph Communications production.